November 22nd, 2003, flight engineer Mario Rafael, Captain Eric Chenault, and co-pilot Steve Mickelson piloted a DHL A300B4 into modern aviation lore. They successfully landed the wounded Airbus with almost zero means of control. The jet was struck with a surface-to-air missile just three minutes out of Baghdad airport at an altitude of about 8,000 feet. Details of what followed were not widely reported at the time, but through an anonymous PowerPoint file made available online, many pilots soon learned the extent of the feat the men accomplished in saving their own lives. Damage from the explosion had drained the aircraft of all hydraulic fluid essential to its flight controls. The hydraulics that actuate ailerons for roll control, flaps and slats that help the aircraft land at a safe slow speed, and even the tail's elevator that helps the pilots control airspeed, climb and descent. Within 20 seconds of the explosion, all hydraulics controlling all those surfaces had dropped to zero. All of those primary flight control surfaces had become useless. The horizontal stabilizer was frozen at a trim position to maintain 215 knots with climb thrust set. The only means of controlling the aircraft was by manipulating the throttles. More power meant a climb, less would result in a dive. Asymmetric thrust could turn the plane slowly, but each change was like a pendulum swing. After each adjustment, the aircraft would seek its new equilibrium. While the pilots dealt with that, the flight engineer had his own problem, keeping both those engines, the only source of control, running. When the missile hit, the engines were both feeding directly from their respective wing tanks, but the explosion had ripped into one wing, and that wing was losing fuel. The flight engineer could open a cross-feed valve to transfer fuel, but doing so could pump fuel overboard through damaged systems. He elected to maintain separate fuel feeds, watching carefully as the left wing drained lower. It took the crew 10 minutes of trial and error to learn how to extract some semblance of control from their impossible situation. During that time, the airspeed swung wildly from 180 to 300 knots, and the aircraft banked beyond 30 degrees from side to side. The crew would learn only later they were still being shot at. At 4,000 feet, the crew successfully lowered the landing gear at a higher than permitted airspeed using an emergency system. That slowed the aircraft, but as they tried to align for the longer of two parallel runways, they found they were better aligned for the shorter of the two and took aim on that one. Records show the aircraft touched down with a nose-up attitude and a descent rate of about 10 feet per second, almost normal. The aircraft departed the runway into the sand with engines in full reverse. The aircraft careened through a razor wire fence and finally came to rest near a suspected minefield. The pilots fled the potentially explosive wreckage but were told to stop and follow a vehicle's tracks to safety. The engines suffered severe damage. Damage to the aircraft's outer left wing was so complete that some fuel just fell out of it. Had the tank been less than full, it may have exploded possibly blowing the wing right off the aircraft. As it was, an adjacent damaged tank managed to supply fuel to the left engine even as fire further weakened the severely damaged rear spar in the wing and threatened the front spar. Flight engineer Mario Rafael, Captain Eric Genot, and co-pilot Steve Mickelson, the only three aboard, had walked away after landing an aircraft with no available flight controls with severe structural damage that was leaking fuel and on fire. For their amazing and historic actions in saving the aircraft and their own lives, each crew member won the Hugh Gordon Berg Memorial Award. But earning their right to keep on living was probably reward enough.